I would say there's two sides to it. One of them being the unsexy side, which is accessibility, because everybody likes to consume content differently. Some people want to listen to podcasts while they're driving. Some people want to read blog posts or like, you know, watch stories. Some people don't like being on social media, so that doesn't work for them. So having those different ways that people can A, find you, but also B, learn from you is really valuable as especially as you scale as you grow like making sure that you're meeting your people where they're at but making it so that they can like also just binge you because those people who talk about oh someone found me and invested me today it's like that person found you they downloaded your freebie they watched all your stories they went through your highlights they like searched your youtube channel it's like there's this power and being bingeable I guess online and having people be able to go through you and like I get it that people come to me and they're like oh I found you on TikTok like I haven't posted on TikTok in six months (laughs) but that content's still there you know welcome to the online creator podcast I'm your host Kim Tradewell founder of May and James Co a creative digital company Building a brand is about human connection. I am here to help you articulate your story through strategy, development, and execution. I believe that anything is possible at any age and at any stage of business. The only limits we have are the ones that we place on ourselves. I want you to feel like you are supported, not alone, and that you are able to take action quickly. On this podcast, expect to hear interviews from a wide range of guest speakers, bite-sized solo episodes from myself, bingeable episodes that will give you insights, different perspectives, and actionable strategies to help you reach your goals personally and professionally. Now let's get into the show. Welcome back to the Online Creator Podcast, episode 38. In this episode today, I get to talk with Feli Day. Feli is a feel-good marketing mentor and content repurposing agency owner doing things a bit unprofessionally. After living as an expat in Mexico for three years while running both sides of her business, she relocated to the south of France to settle down with her partner. Feli helps her clients on both sides of her business fall in love with marketing and build their business unprofessionally. Today, we dig into marketing and promoting her brand and how she shows up authentically her, how she loves the platform of audio and how she utilizes it in her business, what omnipresence marketing is all about, and her approach with working with clients to help build that omnipresence that is so, so needed in marketing today. Welcome, Feli, to the show. Hi, Feli. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast this morning. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, this is, you know, I find this online business world so unique because I thought I read something that you were from the West Coast here in Canada, but I wasn't sure. And then you corrected me. You were there, but now you're adventuring off in the south of France. So cool. I can't wait to hear a little bit more about your travels and how your your business allows you to be able to do that. And I think a lot of us are just sitting here going, okay, <laughs> how did you do this? Where did the, all of this fun travel experience and, you know, like being able to just do it came from? Because that's pretty cool. Oh, I was a traveler first. Like the business was a necessity for my travels. Because okay, I, there you go. Like I, I mentioned to you before we started recording that like I lived in Alberta. I did four seasons. Technically, I did two summers, two winters, one in Waterton, two okay. winters and one summer in Banff. After that, I moved to Australia because I was like, wow, negative 30. Can't do this. <laughs> right. <laughs> but before that, people don't understand until they experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's like before that, I'd already backpacked Europe. Like I backpacked Europe for three months when I was 19. I went to your I went to Germany for Christmas when I was 17 and I was just like, yeah, I don't I don't want to be here. So <laughs> like my, my grade 12 year, like high school Christmas break and went to Germany. What the heck? That's so amazing because, yeah, I feel like either my brother did that, too. It's just my brother and myself and, and our family. And he got a job right out of college 
across like overseas. And he's like, I'll do it for five years. He's done it for 25. <laughs> Right. And so like his daughter doesn't know anything different, mm -hmm. right? Like they've just traveled all over and, you know, now he's back in actually Calgary, which is like the closest he's ever lived in like our adulthood. So I'm really excited. But now that he's back, he's still going down south. So like whatever. Yeah. yeah. No. And I see that for my and my partner's future because we met like I moved to Mexico. I actually was supposed to be backpacking from Mexico to Colombia, but it was February 2020. And the borders closed uh, my like a month into my Mexico trips. <laughs> I met my partner and he's like the same as me that he's been traveling for years. He's done way more countries than me, but he's also like 10 years older than me. So I let it slide. Okay. But he's done so like all South America, all Central America. And I haven't because I didn't get to because the borders all closed. And I'm just like, well, we're, we're going to go. I don't care if you've already been to all these places. We're still going to go. <laughs> Oh my God, that's amazing. So amazing. Okay, so I love opening up my episode and my conversation with my guests with the first question, uh, how have you leveraged your voice to better your business and brand? And maybe it's been a bit of a journey. Has it always come natural to you? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. I would say yes, that it has always come naturally to me, which like, I don't know. It's funny because I feel like with the pandemic, with everything that happened, I kind of like lost my voice after having it before <laughs> and like mm -hmm. being, I'd say I'm amb ambivert, like not an introvert, not a full extrovert. Like I fully need time to recover, but I also get bored alone. But I became more introverted and lost my ability. And like in the beginning, I used to just be on my Instagram stories, in my towel, in bed, like in a sheet, like giving my trainings on stories. And then I started doing like TikTok and all of that. And I just like fell off at some point and like lost the ability to speak. But in that period, it was so fun and exciting because you constantly get people in your DM or like emails or whatever, wherever people show up for you saying like, this is what I needed, or you encouraged me, or I love how you make this seem possible and like introducing. And I feel like I see it happening a lot now more that more and more people are leaning towards collaboration and networking and like using podcasts, using summits, but it's like that connection aspect was something that was really big in my business. And it's something that I'm only just coming back into. Like for reference, I've been in business for four years. So I feel like year one and two, it was there. And then like year three, it kind of fell off. And I'm not quite sure why. But I'd say like now that I'm coming back into it, like I had a, I did a talking story the other day for the first time in a long time. And someone was like, you should talk more. Like it's so infectious. And I'm just like, yeah, I haven't talked in like a year on my story. <laughs> oh my God, this is so relatable. And I would call myself an ambivert as well, if that's how you mm -hmm. say it properly. I just, I am 100% the same way. I need time to recover. I need my alone time, but I do still love to socialize. I just need to do it on my time and mm -hmm. I have to recognize where my energy is. And that jumping into this online space, I don't come from a business background. I come from health, actually. So, so marketing and sales, like your expertise doesn't come natural to me, but also how you are expressing and explaining how you are personally, I think a lot of us can relate to. So how, how do you network and market your own business then if you've taken that step back? Because I think a, there's a lot of us that have become more, you know, kind of quiet since things changed in the world. And now we're just starting to open up. Like I've booked myself my first in real life conference in the fall and I'm super excited but I'm like oh my god I haven't done one in so long like literally it's probably been like three years am I actually gonna be able to show up for two days like what <laughs> yeah I was actually looking for yeah. some kind of like entrepreneurial meetup digital nomad thing in this mm -hmm. region in the south of France and I found nothing but that's okay I'll find something eventually <laughs> you know but yes, you will. so for now it's it's online things and I think it's like remembering why like, it's the same as business, right? Like, remember your why. Why do you want to? Why are you doing this? Like, I had my first coffee chat in a long time yesterday because it was someone in the UK. And I was like, I just need to meet people that are in this time zone because everybody I know is in the US and Canada. And 
I woke up and I saw the notification on my phone for like the day and I was like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Why did I book myself into that? And then I was like, no, I'm not canceling it. Like I'm going to show up. And it was great. We talked for an hour when it was supposed to be like half an hour. And I was just like, why? Like, I know that once I do it, I'll like it, you know? And I think that's like a difference. Like if you don't actually like in-person events, then don't force yourself because you won't like it just because you forced yourself to do it. Like maybe one in a million will be fun, but remembering that you're doing it because you actually like it. And same, that's the same with like talking on stories or like creating dancing reels, trend reels, whatever. Like you're doing it because you actually like it. And it's just like scary to start or restart, but you still will enjoy it at the end of the day, even if you have to push yourself to do it. Yes, I'm sitting over here nodding for sure. You have your own podcast. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit how that came about and why you decided audio was the platform that you wanted to show up on. Oh, it was like a two year in the making. Okay. Thing, I mean, you know, actually <laughs> either. <laughs> I remember at the start of 2020, my like business goal was to speak on podcasts. And I ended up speaking on like 20 podcasts that year. And all the time people would be like, but why don't you just start your own? And I had it in my head that it was so much work, so complicated. I didn't know how to do all the techie things, which is weird because I'm like a naturally techie person. I don't struggle with tech, but I was just so, I guess, afraid. And I remember I talked to a podcast manager, strategist person um, towards middle of 2022, I guess. And she was like, what's holding you back from starting your show? And I was like, I don't know how to do an intro. I don't know how to edit audio. And she's just like, an intro is the most skipped over part of an episode. Nobody listens to intros after the first time. And I was like, oh, is that really all that's holding me back? Is the thing that nobody will actually pay attention to? <laughs> and then I joined a mastermind and my coach was like, I want to challenge you to launch a podcast. And I was like, it's already on my to-do list. So I'm going to set a date set the date for like the first week of November and it was done. Nice. Nice. I know I was the same way. I held off for uh, probably two and a half years because I was like, well, my excuse was I was helping others. Mm -hmm. so I'll leave mine. I don't have time. Right. I'll just leave it. And, and who wants to listen to Kim's voice? And then the same thing. I think I redid my intro and outro like, I don't know, three or four times before I was like, ah, whatever. But I love that piece of advice. Like, Literally, like it is skipped over. I'm totally going to remember that for future clients because yeah. if that's what's holding you back, get over it. I do say to clients that things can be changed, like your name mm. can be changed, your graphic art can be changed, your intro, outro can be changed. Everything about your podcast can be changed when you are ready to pivot or change in your own business or how you're feeling in the moment. And that's why I love it so much is that there's no rules. Oh, I was ready to rebrand my podcast a month into launching it. No way. Like, I launched it live. <laughs> it was called Belly's Fishbowl. It was like a title that I loved and had like held on to for two years, mm -hmm. but it didn't really make sense anymore two years later. And so I launched yeah. it being like stubborn, like this, I'm keeping it. I've said for yeah. forever, this is going to be it. And then immediately was like, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> oh my gosh. And so you just changed. I, I just changed it. Like after I moved from Mexico to Canada to yeah. France, I was like, I'm going to just pause the podcast because there's too much shit in my life. Sorry, yeah. I can't swear. No. <laughs> and yeah. then um, I'm going to relaunch it when I get to France and I'm going to relaunch it as the unprofessional entrepreneur. Yeah. And so where did that come from? The title? Where did that name and the name? Because that's who you kind of are and what your mission is like. Has it always been that it's evolved into that? Yeah, it's evolved into that. And I'd say like, I, I still do it. Not like, it's not an old thing, but I like to debunk words a lot and mm -hmm. like talk about like, okay, like let's reframe the narrative around this word. And so it was like last year that I posted, maybe it was even 2021 that I posted about like the word professional. I don't like the word professional, like people consider me unprofessional, like by an industry standard, I'm unprofessional, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it kind of like stemmed from there from lots of conversations. And it's like the pinned, the pinned post on my Instagram. I think there's two of them now. 
but it, it, it definitely took me a minute. Like the first post blew up. I made a second one. And then I was like, wait, like, I don't want to be labeled as the unprofessional entrepreneur. I just think we should all forget the word professional. (laughs) And so it was like a lot of conversations with my coach and like self like coaching and journaling through it of like, what's my problem with being labeled that? Because I've like very publicly stated that I don't like the word. I don't believe in it. I don't think it affects your business. And so it was just like a personal journey to be able to like come to terms with it. And now I feel like I can embrace it. And like, I'm cool with it being my podcast title where before when I launched in November, I was like, no, I don't want to be known as that. I don't want that as my title. I could totally see that. But again, like, we've never met before and just so much that you're saying just I I remember I have an aunt and uncle who said their kids were going to be professionals and they hadn't even been to their first day of university yet and I was like what does that I just remember it bothering me because I was like what does that even mean Mm -hmm. like what does that mean for you and so it was like a word too that I always have had an issue with and then coming into this online space like can you show up and do this if that's not what you were trained all your life in well it depends like what skills are you bringing from the experiences and all the things that you've done in your life like to me like that matters more right if I can come into the situation and bring value why does it matter what my letters are behind my name Mm, yeah no as as someone who didn't go to university but I have like very academic family, parents, Mm -hmm. everybody in my life, (laughs) you know, it was definitely like an act of rebellion personally to be like unprofessional, like F that. But also like, then that was like the imposter syndrome inside of like, wait, I say it online, but like, can I fully embrace that? Yes. Because like, there's a quote from the podcast on my page right now that it's like, you pay me for my brain, not my not my wardrobe because in Mexico I was always like in a bathing suit in a moo moo mm-hmm. like never wearing bras and mm-hmm. it was like I don't need to put on a bra for a sales call <laughs> right no you know, I read that like and I was like you're right yeah <laughs> but but is it though right like that's the it's thing not- like I think if you're bringing value and you're delivering on the agreed upon deliverables like what mm-hmm. what more do you need this is it and like it's so like- cool marketing that I'm like look you could have gone to school like I graduated from high school 10 years ago if I got a marketing degree five six seven years ago it wouldn't even be relevant anymore because Instagram wasn't what it was TikTok didn't Mm -hmm. exist video marketing wasn't what it was podcasts barely existed like you know it's like Mm -hmm. the things that I teach and focus on a 20 year old degree doesn't really say much about my knowledge right now. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And so it's like, there's just so many things in the professional term of like, what makes you qualified? What makes you professional (laughs) that I'm like, I don't agree with personally. (laughs) Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. If you're creating video or audio content for your online business, then you need to check out the platform Descript. Descript is an all-in-one audio and video editor that makes editing as easy as a Word doc. Upload media or record directly in Descript to instantly transcribe your file into text. Then tweak the text to directly edit your media clips. Edit out filler words such as um, ahs, and likes, and silent gaps with a single click. Record your screen and webcam for presentations and video messages and edit out mistakes before hitting publish. Use pro editing features such as a non-destructive multi-track editing, live collaboration, auto captioning, exports, and much more. To try this platform risk-free, check out the link in the show notes. Okay, so what is omnipresent um, marketing? What does that look like for you? Omnipresent, omnichannel, whatever it is that you prefer to call it, is the, the strategy of being on multiple platforms. 
I like to think of it as three or more, but technically just two is omnipresent. So usually we're on Instagram, podcast, email, maybe you have a Facebook group, maybe you have a TikTok, YouTube, whatever. But all those secondary platforms become make up having an omnipresence. And what's the power of that when you work with clients? Because I believe I believe in the value and importance of showing up for one that you're going to keep showing back up for. Mm -hmm. But I love your approach of saying, listen, like you need to be seen. I don't even know how many times, a gazillion times before somebody actually takes notice, listens and wants to come into your world. Right. So being omnipresent obviously would help with that. Yeah. What's the power in that when you work with clients and do you believe in kind of picking three that you're consistently repurposing, like having one platform that you're consistently showing up on and then repurposing from there? Or how do you look at that? I would say there's like two sides to it. One of them being the unsexy side, which is accessibility, because everybody likes to consume content differently. Some people want to listen to podcasts while they're driving. Some people want to read blog posts or like you know, watch stories. Some people don't like being on social media, so that doesn't work for them. So like having those different ways that people can A, find you, but also B, learn from you is really valuable as, especially as you scale, as you grow, like making sure that you're meeting your people where they're at, but making it so that they can like also just binge you because those people who talk about like, oh, someone found me and invested me today. It's like that person found you. They downloaded your freebie they watched all your stories they went through your highlights they like searched your youtube channel you know it's like there's like this this power in being bingeable i guess online and having people be able to go through you and like i get it that people come to me and they're like oh i found you on tiktok like i haven't posted on tiktok in six months (laughs) but that content's still there you know and now it's like usually i get people through instagram but i'll sell through email or I'll sell through the podcast more than through Instagram and it's like you can have that as well and so that's where like when it comes to content repurposing like you said it's like finding the core platform the platform you like to create for and then finding platforms that work for you to show up consistently on to repurpose to but you always want to think about like what's your intention for that platform So it's like, what's my intention for email? Am I just going to send out email blasts of like new podcast episode? Because people don't care about that. They can just like click follow on Spotify and get the notification. But are you going to be like, my email gets like my love letters, my personal journey, uh, not journey, journal, (laughs) you know, like my journal notes, like the in-depth thing, right? And then like Instagram stories, like you're going to see me raw and unfiltered where Instagram feed might be, carousels and like value packed and educational and so it's like when you're thinking about repurposing I want my clients and like anyone listening to this like really think about the intention you have for the platform you're repurposing to because that will also help you with the frequency you show up on it yes all of that so good I totally checked out some of your content because I just I really do love your approach and I think it's so relatable to so many people so I know you have your audio your podcast but you also do such a good job, obviously, of doing what you help others do. What is like when you work with clients to like help build up their blog to get like SEO stuff? What are some key tips on how to generate keywords or the titles? Like, how do you help clients build up that repertoire of omnipresence? Um, when it comes to blogging specifically, we're going to have like your general focus keyword that you want everything to revolve around and encompass like all the long t long tail keywords that could right. possibly like touch yep. on that right so it's like for me it's content repurposing that a lot of my blogs are focused on without saying it like I have a blog why you need a blog and it's talking mm-hmm. about repurposing to a blog and you have another one that's like places to places to build your omnipresence. I'm not sure if I posted that one yet. But it's like, again, talking about repurposing to build your omnipresence. And so it's like, different things that people will be searching within the same thing, because you can't just have content repurposing as the keyword on every single right. blog post, like Google, you have to reframe it a bit. will like, reject you at that point, you know, right. so, yeah. yeah, like yeah. SEO wise, you need to almost go for the long tail searches. And like okay. things like answer the public and yeah, is it Cora? Cool Cora, that 
the one with the Q, Q U O R A. I don't know how to pronounce that one out. it. But yeah. it's the same thing as Answer the Public. But yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. things like that can really help yeah. you be like, okay, I can write a blog post on this and then like just taking it from a different angle. So it's like I have my cornerstone content is the like what is content repurposing and how to do it. And then I have like how to build your content repurposing workflow, how to offer content repurposing services. And it's like Ah, that slight variation, but it's all still focused on my same theme of content repurposing. Mm -hmm. How does this look when a client is trying to build brand awareness? Brand awareness, I would say to look at what platforms you want to be on. I personally don't believe that it's like, there's platforms for your audience. I think that's done with, you know, Mm -hmm. like Facebook groups still really work. TikTok really work. Podcasts really work. YouTube really works, you know? So it's like, what do you personally want to be doing? Mm -hmm. And then, like I was saying with the blogging strategy is like finding that key phrase and you just need to repeat yourself on every single platform. Right. If you want someone to know you for something, you need to say it a hundred (laughs) times. Yeah. I think we tend to overthink everything in business. And so (laughs) it's like walking through this with you again, it's not rocket science, but you do have to have a bit of a plan. You do have to do a little bit of keyword searching and figuring out what that looks like and then be able to reframe it. But you don't have to reinvent the wheel kind of thing for Mm -hmm. every repurposing platforms that you want to go on. You just have to restructure it a bit, what you have. I remember working with a client and we were looking at adding private audio feed to her business and she's an artist. And she was like, well, all my stuff is very visual. And I'm like, well, let's just see some of the content that you have. And she had so many blog posts. It was insane. And I'm like, can we like repurpose some of your blog posts? And she's like, what do you mean? And so when we started diving into what she had already created, because I think a lot of us do have a lot of good content already mm-hmm. developed. Mm-hmm. We just haven't pulled from it and then seen where else we can show up using that same content, but maybe just tweaking it a bit, because obviously you can't just read a blog post for a podcast but you can definitely pull the content and then just reframe it and restructure it. Yeah. You can use it as an outline. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, that's, it's so good. Like I just love how you show up authentically like you. So many people can relate to not wanting to be live on stories, but how do you build that brand awareness, that relationship building, that piece, that core content so that people know who you are, what you do, and how they can work with you in your world. You just kind of do that in a unique fashion. And I really love your spin on it. If people are looking at working with you, Feli, how do they find you? What's the best way to get into your world? Um, I would say Instagram. Easily the easiest way to talk to me to see what I'm about. because That's where I'm most active. I'm on Instagram at Feli Day or on my website, FeliDay.com. Or check out her podcast, oh, The my Unprofessional podcast. Entrepreneur. <laughs> it's so fun. It's so fun. I love it. Before you go, I love just going through a few rapid fire questions. This is a fun way to get to know who you are. What parts of you are you most proud of? Because I just think, again, like you blow me away at how you're just so brave in just trying and experiencing life and where you go and where you move and what's the next pivot and change and it's so inspiring so what for you are you most proud of where you are at today my first thought was like body parts and I was gonna say my hair but (laughs) we're talking like personality that works too (laughs) personality I'd say like resilience my resilience and it's definitely like a learned skill from traveling because Mm. you have no control when you're traveling and I just remember when I was in Southeast Asia in 2018 like I probably said three times a day it'll all work out because everything's late everything's all over the place. People say one thing, they do another thing. Like there's no, you can't control it. And if you stress about it, it's just going to upset you. And it's the same thing with life, with business. Like there's so many things we can't control and focusing on it and obsessing on about it. Like it won't get you anywhere. It'll just mess up your nervous system and make you miserable, (laughs) (laughs) like mess with your sleep, you know? So 
normally yeah. i think i should have experienced more travel in my 20s 100 uh, percent well if you want to be very uncomfortable go to anywhere in central south america caribbean islands africa asia these places where time is not a thing oh coming from the western world it like me insane it drives so many people insane and i'm like you can't think like a westerner because they don't do time <laughs> time doesn't matter Saying let's eat dinner soon means we'll start cooking in two hours. Just oh eat a gosh. snack. Like- you know what though? But I think we all have friends that could relate to that. Like I have a friend that she's on her own time frame. Mm-hmm. Always has, always will be. I have a teenage son who's the same way. He would do well there. <laughs> yeah. And it's like those people, they would have no worries. And it's like you'd yeah. be with your son being like, uh, where's the boat? The boat was supposed to be here at two o'clock, and it's like the boat's actually going to show up at three thirty. But he would you be should so still be chill. there at two o'clock. You just can't. He would you, be so chill. He'd be like, "What's the big deal, mom?" It's still just coming. <laughs> like, that's exactly what he would say. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Okay, and how do you keep showing up? Because this we talked about a little bit before we hit record. It's such a weird space and it can be mm-hmm. so lonely at times. So how do you keep showing up and being creative and inspired and what keeps that drive for you? Close friends. <laughs> I see so many people talk about close friends as like a launch strategy. And I'm like, my close friends, mm-hmm. I've like labeled it as like sex, drugs and rock and roll because there's like no filter on close friends. They see everything. I cry. I yell. I get mm-hmm. mad. I just like vent. And it's like such a soothing place to be able to turn to like 50 of my closest friends <laughs> and just like be like, I hate this situation. Just let me be angry. I can't like talk about it publicly because like maybe it's like a client situation. Maybe it's like my partner and like the French yeah. culture and how annoyed I am with it, you know? And right. it leads to conversations in the DMs where you're having like one on one conversations with people, but it's very like healing. And close friends is like my crutch sometimes that I'm like, close friends, is anyone awake? Yeah, no, I agree. I love that. And are you an avid reader or are you more of an audio music, audio books? What kind of and like gets you kind of going that way? I cannot get into audio books. I'm really picky about like people's voices when they're talking like that because I've tried a few and I'm just like, oh, you sound so condescending. <laughs> Um, it has to be the right book for sure yeah 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 yeah. I basically always have Spotify open either music playing a whole lot of different playlists going but I do listen to a lot of podcasts and I used to read a lot but I got like addicted to reading and I just stopped sleeping because I couldn't sleep before I finished a book So now I don't read anything because I don't have a balance and I don't have the ability to have a balance That's, but that's fair. I actually, we took a break in February and my only job was to read a book for pure entertainment. And it was Mm -hmm. like the best thing ever, but I'm the same way. If I like just start one that I'm into, it's like that. So I have to, there's like times when I can allow myself to do that and times where I just have to, it's a time thing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, my partner went to the U S when we were in Mexico at one point in our relationship And I was like staying up till 5 a.m. reading every night. And I was just like, if he was here, he would take away my phone, (laughs) make me go to sleep. But because I'm just like living life by myself, I I got no rhythm. (laughs) Rhythm, no rhythm. Is there anything that I missed today that you definitely want to chat about or go over or... Oh, yeah, we, covered we covered some of the basics. I yeah. What's the offer that you like working with the best with your clients right now? Like, is there one particular container that you're just like, I love doing that piece? Like for me, I love the strategy piece when I work with clients. Like I love like a bigger picture and how it can fit in their world and what it can look like and how it can evolve. Like what's your favorite thing? Oh, I'm torn. Like I want to say the easy answer is one-on-one because you just right. get to see and hear and like get so deep into so much people's businesses but at the same time I also feel that way about when it comes to content repurposing and like just giving people like the hundreds of ideas that we can create yeah it's so fun just the ideation 
<laughs> the ideation and the creativeness and mm-hmm. and especially when you because I always say too like you get to choose your clients just as much as they choose you so mm-hmm. when you work with someone that really lights you up too it's so crazy fun like mm-hmm. it's so fun what you can kind of create together so thank you so much for your time today <laughs> there goes my dog here we go <laughs> I appreciate you and I hope people go and find you and have the opportunity to at least listen to what you're all about and check out your content because you're amazing thank you thank you for having me thanks so much for listening into the show it truly means so much to me You can check out the important links mentioned in today's episode in the show notes, and please join the conversation over on Instagram at me and James Co. I love hearing from you. There are so many great conversations coming up, so please make sure you are subscribed to Apple or Spotify or any of your favorite media players so that you don't miss out. And if you enjoyed the show today, please share and leave a review and a rating because it helps us so very much. Until next time.